all. I check my Discord with my keyboard. Uh, dear OSU Phoenix. Ooh, that's me. Uh, sometimes I set up my OBS and the version I have will run amazing one day and the next I will have multiple crashes on my stream. What can I do to make OBS run smooth on a more consistent basis? Constant basis. Yes. Respectfully yours, Johnny H. Well, Johnny H, OBS Studio crashing happens to everyone, including people who don't know how to structure a letter on the internet. But I can show you some amazing hidden features of OBS Studio that you can use to help fix some of your issues. So let me give you five cool things that you don't know about OBS Studio. Putting the horrible knockoff of strong bad emails aside, let me show you the first hidden feature that's really, really cool about OBS Studio. So first off, you're gonna wanna go up to where it says help. And if you come down to where it says log files, if you actually do upload current log file, it'll come up with this right here. And all you have to do is click analyze. So what'll happen is it will pop up with this log analyzer. And if you scroll down, it's going to show you some of the problems you might actually be having and some things that could be causing a problem and also letting you know some of the things it's already detecting. So for me actually recording right now, apparently I am not really using the best settings for recording. So that could be an issue, but that at least is gonna give you something to work with to identify some of the issues you may be having with your stream crashing. Another helpful tool that maybe you're not using, but maybe you should, is the stats. Now to find your stats, all you gotta do is go to view, and then your stats will pop up. And this is going to show you what your OBS is doing. So one of the best things to look at, your frames missed due to rendering lag, your skipped frames due to encoding lag, and additionally, your dropped frames to network. What this will tell you is where some of your problems are coming from. So if you're seeing frames skipped or encoding lag, one of those two things, that would tell you you need to look at your task manager on Windows, so that way you can identify, is it your CPU that's getting overloaded? Is it your GPU that's getting overloaded? And that will help you determine, do I need to lower the resolution of my stream? Are my game settings too high? Now, if it's dropped frames to network, that means you're trying to push too much through your internet. Your internet just can't handle it. If you stream to Twitch, and you go, man, it would be really nice to be able to, to do a test stream to Twitch without anybody seeing, there is a solution to that. So if you open up your settings and you go to stream, if you're already logged in through your Twitch, you can actually enable bandwidth test mode. What this is going to do is allow you to send basically your stream to Twitch without going live. The one thing you need to make sure you're doing is either hitting OK or apply to make sure that actually stays. So let's hit apply. So once you would hit start streaming, it's gonna come up with this alert so that way you know. You have OBS configured in a bandwidth test mode. Every time you put it in test mode, this will let you know that, hey, you're running a test, you're not actually going live. Now, what makes this great is the fact that you can now do a bandwidth test to Twitch with different settings, trying to find what's going to be the most stable for you, and you don't have to be live doing it. Use this to make sure you can keep your stream stable. I've got another one for you that actually would transform the way you do things when it comes to co-streaming with others. So if you come down here to where you have your virtual camera, you hit the cogwheel here, you will actually see that we have the output type as program default, which means it's gonna show everything that's going on on your screen. But what if you don't want that? What if you just want your camera? So if you hit okay with your source and just being the Elgato, your camera, which for me is my Elgato camera, and you hit okay, watch what we can do. So when you would put in your virtual camera, and then you put it into maybe another OBS or you put it into Discord or send it to your friends somehow. I don't know, however you would wanna work this, you can send only the camera. So let's take the Discord for example. For my voice and video on Discord, I'm gonna make it my OBS virtual camera. Then when I go and I put on my camera, it's just me and not the source that I'm currently recording in. You can make it not your entire scene, making it easier on Discord calls. And then if somebody wants to capture your video feed of your camera and put it in their stream, 
you can do it. If you have multiple different ways you like to set up your stream and you don't want to have to sit and have multiple different scenes, but you like to change things up a bit. Did you know that all you have to do is go to your scene collection and create new one? Name it whatever you want. The other one. And voila, we have an entirely new set of scenes we can build. And then if we wanted to go back to what we were using or go to a different one, we can and it will save everything as you need it to be, instantly making it easier for you to control what kind of stream you wanna have. But it doesn't stop at just scene collections. What if you like to stream to multiple different places, but you only like to stream to them, you know, maybe you only stream to Twitch one time and sometimes you stream to Twitch and YouTube through Restream or many other different things? There's a way to manage that too. So next to scene collection, you have profile. And if you go do a new profile, I'm gonna name this one Multi-Stream. And then you can set up an entirely new way of recording or streaming. So for my setup, I actually have where I have a Twitch only, I have Restream.io where I can go to maybe Facebook Gaming, YouTube, Kick, whatever I wanna choose from Restream. Because of a multi-RTMP plugin I use on OBS Studio, I can go live to Twitch, and have my VOD track still enabled the way I like to have it, and then use Restream to go to YouTube and kick simultaneously doing all three. And have you ever had an issue with trying to like fine tune how everything needs to fit exactly into your OBS? And you're just like, it's so tiny, I can't see it. There's a fix for that too. All right, let's go to our gaming scene. By the way, yes, I did make this overlay. So let me just go ahead and add myself back in here. Ah, that was unflattering. <laughs> so now I've added myself back in here. I'm trying to figure out how best to line this up and I wanna make it match perfectly. Just imagine there's a background behind here and you know, we've got these, these limitations. But we wanna make sure that I'm kind of keeping in this thing right here. Well, if you right click on your scene, go to full screen projector, and choose a monitor. Now with a full scale projector, I can sit and adjust this to be exactly where I would want it to be. It looks mostly correct for what I'd want. This way, if you're trying to fit yourself into a little box with your camera, you can actually make sure that none of that camera is actually sticking out, which is wonderful. This is how I make sure that I keep everything looking very clean. Now here's another fun little feature in case you ever wanted to use it. I don't know why, but maybe you do. If you go up here to view and you come down to multi view, it will actually bring up a window that's going to show you all your different scenes. So this way, if you wanted to see what each scene was looking like and you had multiple different people coming in for each different scene, you can actually look at how everything's set up and you can choose which one you wanna to go to by double clicking. And you can just see which sources get turned off. If you're using a lot of resources on your computer, this is a great way to identify what's still running even when you're streaming. So if I go to the starting soon screen, you'll see that that one is active. And then if I actually do the chatting screen where I have a stinger transition that I designed to make sure it goes inside the little uh, underwater fortress of solitude type thing, you'll see that it actually will keep the starting soon up while going to the chatting and won't turn off until that transition is done. So if you're having lag issues during your transitions between one scene and the next, you can more properly identify, hey, maybe there's some things I need to take out of here, or maybe there's too much in this scene and it's just making it too hard for my computer to work. This multi-view is going to be particularly useful if you're doing a like podcast style of stream where you have multiple people that are on screen that you need to have on screen and you need to move between the different kinds of scenes. Who's talking and who you need to double click on then becomes so much easier. Rather than trying to look at your list and going, man, which, we, oh, sh I, uh, 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 it's so small. Don't worry about it. Now you can do the multi-view and you can visually see who's talking, double click. I'm gonna give you a bonus one, just because I'm feeling really fun here. There's actually a way for you to export your entire scene collection and have it as a save, essentially. So if you go up here to scene collection, you have import and export. Well, if you hit export, 
you'll take your current scene collection and save it as a JSON file, which makes it easier for you to then come back to. So if I hit save. So, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm about to remove this entire overlay. Oh no. Now I've accidentally gotten rid of it. The scene collection's gone. Oh no. That's okay. If you go to import and you find where you save that JSON and you load it, I can bring it back. Import. Now all I got to do is switch back to that scene. And voila, our scene collection is back. Everything is back to where it should be. So this way you can always make sure you can bring your scenes back. Now the only catch to this is it will not bring back the media files. So those, if they're not in the same spot that they were before, you're gonna have to reset those. Now, I've also done a video about OBS portable mode where you not only can save the scene collection, but all your settings, everything that you have installed, maybe plugins, and if you're smart, smarter than I was because I haven't done this because I have way too much now. <laughs> you can actually throw an assets folder into your OBS Studio folder where OBS Studio is in portable mode and you can actually save all your assets too. This way you save everything, which basically would mean if something really horrible happened and you needed to go back to it, it is just a delete the OBS that's bad and put the backup in its place and you've got it back to what you need to. So make sure you're checking out the OBS portable mode because I guarantee you that's going to be way more efficient than doing the import export. So there are some new tools for you that you probably didn't know you had access to. Make sure you're using them because those are going to make your life a little bit easier. I'll see you on the next video.